Starknet is yet another layer too that will soon be launching a ZK EVM. Before that happens, here are the three main methods to bridge your funds from Ethereum and other layer 2s to the Starknet network. I'll be going through the pros and cons of each of these methods as well as show you how I bridge my funds using the platform that I've chosen. Before you are able to bridge your funds over, you need to have both an Ethereum wallet as well as a Starknet wallet. It is currently not possible for you to add Starknet to Metamask because this network is not compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. There are two main Starknet wallets that you can use including Argent X and Bravo and my video in the description will show you how you can create a Starknet wallet using Arjun X. The very first bridge we can use is Starkgate and this is the official bridge that was developed by the Starkware team. The main drawback of this bridge is that you are only able to bridge your funds from the Ethereum network to Starknet. The gas fees on the Ethereum network are usually very expensive and this bridging transaction will cost me about $8 worth of Ethereum. This can be extremely expensive if you are only looking to bridge over a small amount of funds from the Ethereum network to Starknet. While the Starkgate bridge provides you with the option to bridge from other networks including Polygon, Arbitrum or Optimism, you will need to use a separate platform known as Orbital Finance. Right now I'm using this platform and I'll need to connect my Argent X wallet to receive the funds that bring bridge over to Starknet. The benefit of Orbital Finance is that it allows me to bridge ETH tokens from other networks and not just being limited to the Ethereum network. This includes the likes of Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism and even the BNB Smart Chain. But my go-to network is always Polygon as the gas fees are much cheaper compared to any of the other layer 2 networks. So I will need to connect my Metamask wallet and I already have some wrap Ethereum on Polygon which I can then send over to Starknet. One benefit of Starkgate is that it allows you to bridge other tokens from the Ethereum mainnet and it is not just limited to the ETH token. So you are able to bridge the likes of Red BTC, USDC, USDT and DAI. On Orbital Finance, if I'm bridging from the Polygon network to Starknet, I'm only able to bridge Ethereum on the DAI stablecoin. You can enter the amount of tokens that you have on this network that you wish to send over to Starknet. Orbital Finance charges a refolding fee of about 0.0012 Ethereum and this roughly costs about $2 in USD. This is used to cover the fluctuating gas fees when you're sending your funds over to Starkgate. This will be the total amount of Ethereum that you'll be sending over and I'm expected to receive 0.02 Ethereum on Starknet. Since I'm using Orbital Finance for the very first time with my wrapped Ethereum, I will need to set a spending cap for my token approval. Metamask currently sets this cap as the maximum amount of Ethereum tokens that you have in your Metamask wallet. But since Orbital Finance is rather trustworthy, I'll just be using the default which actually means that it is an unlimited token approval. You can see that the gas fees on Polygon are extremely cheap and I only need to pay one cent worth of Matic for this token approval transaction. I'm also securing my assets using a ledger wallet that is connected through Metamask as this adds an extra layer of security to my assets. I have a link in the description if you're interested in buying one of these hardware wallets. And if you also want to know a bit more about what token approvals really mean, I explain this in another video which I'll also leave a link in the description. Right now I'm physically approving this transaction on my ledger device and this will just be the first step before I transfer my funds over to Starknet. Now that the approval has been confirmed, this will be the transaction where I send my Ethereum from the Polygon network to Starknet. Again, the gas fees are really cheap and I just need to pay one cent worth of Matic for this bridging transaction. Let me know in the comments which network you'll be using to send your funds over to Starknet and do also let me know if you need any help to get your funds on the Polygon network. My bridging transaction is currently processing and it may take a few minutes or even an hour before my funds are being sent over to Starknet. While I'm waiting for that, I can show you another method to bridge your funds over to Starknet and that is by using layer swap. The benefit of layer swap is that if you have Ethereum on a centralized exchange like Binance, Huobi or KuCoin, you are able to send these funds over to layer swap and they will be able to bridge these funds to any of these networks including Starknet. So let's say I have some Ethereum on Binance and I wish to send it over to Starknet. So right now I'm only limited to sending USDC over to Starknet. Layer swap charges about $2 worth of USDC and the total fees that you incur are still much cheaper compared to if you are bridging your funds directly from the Ethereum network. You can send USDC over to this wallet address using either the BNB Smart Chain or the Ethereum network. I would recommend that you send your funds over using the BNB Smart Chain as Binance charges lower withdrawal fees compared to if you are rejoining USDC via the Ethereum network. Layer swap also provides cross chain bridging and you are able to bridge from any of these networks to Starknet. The main drawback is that it does not allow you to bridge your funds from the Polygon network so the next cheaper alternative will either be the Arbitrum or the Optimism networks. You'll also be limited to only bridging USDC from any of these networks to Starknet. AirSwap charges about $1.68 for its fees and you'll also need to account for the gas fees that you pay for this transaction 
This would be a good alternative to Orbital Finance, but my choice will still be to bridge my funds over from Polygon as the gas fees are extremely cheap. Right now, the transaction has been confirmed on the Polygon network and I will still need to wait a while before my funds are being received on Starknet. The transaction has been completed and now I have 0.02 Ethereum on the Starknet mainnet. This bridging transaction actually only took a few minutes and we can see this from the transaction hashes on both the Polygon and Starknet. The funds were sent over to Orbital Finance at about 12.44pm if we convert it to my time zone of GMT plus 8. This this transaction was then confirmed on Starknet at 12.49pm, so it only took about 5 minutes for the entire bridging transaction to be processed. Right now the status of my transaction is that it has been accepted on the Starknet layer 2 and this countdown timer here refers to the time taken before this transaction is accepted on the layer 1 which in this case is referring to the Ethereum network. Now that you have your Ethereum tokens on Starknet, my video here will show you some of the strategies that I'll be doing to potentially qualify for the Starknet airdrop. 